Dun da da dun! Welcome to the presentation of. What, what's this video called? <laughs> the Dreamtime, an ancient metaverse of consciousness. -ness -ness -ness. If you're following along in all the radical changes and transformations of the 21st century so far, you'll know about a concept emerging today called the metaverse. While Facebook might have you believe it was their idea, although they didn't say that directly, the metaverse has been growing for years now. It is, in essence, a new version of the internet. And over the next 10 years, we'll see businesses, schools, entertainment, and mystery schools enter into a shared three-dimensional virtual reality, just like what you saw in Ready Player One. But while the metaverse relies on new technology being created in order for us to experience it, the dream time relies on remembering what we already have a biological metaverse that comes built into the human body and connects us with each other and the whole freaking universe! Hey, don't forget about the multiverse. We'll get to that! The dream time is an energetic field which we are a part of, which links and connects all of us together through thought, emotion, imagination, and memory. This energetic field is both internal and external to us, operating through both time and space. In science today, it's become common to conceptualize underlying forces or dimensions that make up our experience in the material world, but which are either outside of our ability to perceive or so tiny that they follow entirely different laws than the ones that we do. The point being that these forces dimensions or quantum realities are informing our reality and experiences in subtle and mysterious ways. Spiritually speaking, these are sometimes referred to as the astral plane or the fourth or fifth dimension. Usually you're talking about one or the other or both at the same time, which might just vary depending on your belief system. For other people, it could be the kingdom of heaven or nirvana, like these other realms that are around us influencing us but are outside of our ability to conceptualize or perceive other than perhaps mystical states of consciousness and expressions of those with each other in the form of art and description and language. This question, what's on the other side, or where are the DMT elves, has eluded us for so long. And the concept of the dream time helps greatly to elaborate upon this understanding. It's kind of like the biological metaverse, and by the end of this video, you're going to see how the dream time will transform our whole world forever. So you can think of the dream time as an energetic field that encompasses your thoughts, memories, ideas, beliefs, dreams, and feelings. Each of us has this within us. It is the experience of our internal world. Literally everyone has a dream time and it's distinguished through different vibrations of thought and feeling, vision and memory, light and darkness. It is the place of your imagination, but it's also the place where you remember things, just a different compartment of it. For the scientist who conceptualizes these inner experiences as residing purely within the brain, this is essentially that, but with a twist. With the dream time, we are also accounting for the thoughts are things energy field theories that are emerging and personifying them in a way that we can make sense of in a practical way. Now, the idea of the dream time was first revealed to the West around 1953 when the anthropologist W.E. Stanner opened his amazing essay called The Dreaming by emphasizing the central role of the concept in indigenous Australia. To him, the Australian Aborigines' outlook on the universe and humans was shaped entirely by a remarkable conception of the world. This conception was picked up by two other anthropologists, Spencer and Gillen, who went on to immortalize it in Western culture as the dream time, or as it was known natively to the Aranda tribe, Alkaringa. The dream time lies at the heart of Aboriginal cultures. And in order to understand their understanding, we can begin to think of the dream time as many things in one. Combining time, history, and experiences together, it is seen both as a narrative of things once happened, 
a charter of things that still happen, and a principle of order that transcends everything significant for us as humans. Now, in a more cosmic sense, it is also a sacred, heroic time long ago when humans and nature came to be as they are. But it's important to note that the dream time is not fixed in time as a single epoch or event in some distant past. For just as it reflects a heroic time in the ancient past, it may also be experienced as a golden age that is yet before us, one that is lying in wait within our dreams and imagination. In the indigenous Walpiri language, they also have a concept known as Jukurpa. In the Walpiri English dictionary, Jukurpa can describe ancestral beings or any manifestation of their power and nature, like knowledge of their travels and activities, rituals, designs, songs, places, and even ceremonies. In this way, the Jukurpa provides a kind of model for human and non-human activity, social behavior, and natural development the Jakurpa is not conceived as being located in any historical past, but as an eternal process, which involves the maintenance of these life forces, symbolized as humans and as other natural species. The Jakurpa then provide a template with which we can use to connect with beings in higher dimensions through the dream time, such as through astral travel, channeling, prayer and meditation, or even plant medicine experiences. You see, the dream time is the process of all of our cosmic energy, ancestors, consciousness, thoughts, memory, and potential futures, all rolling together actively with us in the present moment and throughout time and space. Adding to this understanding of the dream time, we have this excerpt from the Flower of Life books, where Drimfalo explains, like the Atlanteans, the Aborigines don't have memory like our vague kind of recollection. They have full tilt 3D holographic memory. They could reconstruct any memory moment by moment and share those memories with others. And they could walk around in the memory and look at it. They could walk up to your table and look into your eyes. It wouldn't be real time, but it's what's known as the dream time. It is like a dream state, but an absolute replica of the reality. Their memory is perfect. They don't have mistakes or flaws. Obviously in that kind of culture, the Atlanteans had no reason to write anything down. Why try to describe something with words when you've got the real thing? This explanation does open up things for us in a really big way, which relates to a deeper understanding of human consciousness, the more we start to recognize it at work before us. Up until recently, the mainstream consensus was that our thoughts and feelings were limited or isolated to ourselves. And a growing body of evidence is still chipping away at this old belief system, demonstrating that thoughts and feelings seem to extend beyond us in some way that is not yet understood. It has been difficult to make headway in this field because we don't yet know how to truly tap into the energetic frequency of the imagination, thoughts, or feelings. We haven't measured those fields beyond the brain. So there's a mainstream assumption that thoughts simply don't exist beyond the brain. Despite this thinking though, many modern experiments today have demonstrated fairly convincingly that telepathy and other shared psychic phenomena is real, which we've discussed in our episodes about thoughts and consciousness. And you can watch those using the links in the description. So as things go today, it truly is a mystery if thoughts and feelings are simply beyond our capacity to measure or are existing in their own fields that we have yet to find. But one thing is for certain, it makes the conversation about who and what we are mighty interesting. So for the purposes of this conversation today, let's consider that our dream time is operating at an exceptionally low level, say one or 2% up to 10 or 15 at best with 100% being full tilt 3D holographic memory. As for why it's operating so low, we've explored theories about this in our Anunnaki movie, as well as the hidden human history movie from way back in the day. So for this video, we'll stay focused on dream time itself, but please check those out if you wanna see an epic story unfold about a potential origin of our species. Okay, so about the dream time. As an example of how it works, if I, in this moment, asked you to think of a tree, pause for dramatic effect, then you probably thought of a tree, right? 
whether it was a visual sensation in your mind or just a memory of the last time you saw a tree. Good old tree, just standing there, being a tree. Poof, like magic, that experience comes to life within you. But now, when you dream at night, where do you go? As you let your body surrender to rest, your consciousness enters into this other realm, free of restriction of the physical. You swirl about through thoughts, emotions, stories, subconscious desires, experiences that you had, dreams of the future, and all of it, all together, fabricating illusionary realities that may or may not have roots in your normal waking life. But dreams are very interesting because, well, have you ever had a dream of something and then personally experienced it days, weeks, months, or even years down the road? This is actually a very common thing. Oftentimes it comes with someone exclaiming, ha ha, deja vu, or, oh my God, I dreamed this. This phenomenon is called future sight, which is one of the many experiences within the dream time. While it's unclear today as to where the dream time exists, whether in the quantum realm or some other dimension we haven't measured or even discovered scientifically yet, it's very possible that the dream time shares a behavior that we find with quantum particles, which is retrocausality, otherwise known in popular media as a kind of time travel. In the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment, quantum particles have been observed interfering with their own path or trajectory both forwards and backwards in time, at least from our perspective observing them. In this, we theorize that our thoughts too can interact with past and future potentials and realities. Regarding the common phenomenon of dreaming the future into form, we can even theorize that the dream time, our mind, thoughts, feelings, imagination, are not as limited as we are and connect us past, present, and future so whether the visions of the future were delivered back in time through memory from your future self, or your mind leapt forward while dreaming into a potential future and created the pathway for you to live and experience that, either way, there's a great deal to unpack and explore here. Now, before we get too excited, straight up, this is Pandora's box. I mean, once you open this box, you really can't close it. We really should put the warnings before this though. We have a number of videos planned all about the dream time and how it works. But for now, to bring it all back to the beginning, this is where the concept of the metaverse comes in. The existence of virtual reality is useful as a model by which we today can somewhat conceptualize the dream time. Further, as this is a tech driven 3D reality space that we all enter into together, we can see that the metaverse is a product of our collective dream time, which has imagined the creative potential of the metaverse to unfold before us. And with awareness of the dream time, we can use our technologies and our virtual spaces to help us learn and connect more with our inner dream time by stimulating all kinds of experiences that transcend what we believed was possible to experience. To make a long story short, while it may take time, over the following decade and beyond, we're going to continue taking our technology and our integration with it further. But we will also take our understanding of consciousness and who we are to new heights, so long as we bring that mindfulness into everything that we create. As these two worlds merge together, our dream time and our technology, we begin a journey of fundamental transformation. One that will transform our means of existence even more fundamentally than every known technology that came before it. For myself personally, I see a lot of potential even for the future of Spirit Mysteries, which currently exists on a browser and in a dedicated app and is a community of thousands of spiritual seekers who have gathered together to master themselves and become creators of their reality. For so long, I've dreamed of creating a physical spirit center, a place of sacred gathering for people to come from all around the world for healing, learning, and sacred authentic connection. And what I'm learning today is that we can also do this digitally, creating a sacred digital virtual temple that you can access from around the world 
and gives you the experience of being in a real mystery school, roaming its halls and learning the mysteries of your own consciousness. And if this is something you want to be a part of and dream with us into form both physical and digital spaces for the evolution of consciousness, then come visit us at spiritmysteries.com and I'll see you on the inside. Now, I didn't intend for this video to end with an ad like that, but you gotta admit, it's a pretty good bridge. We are very serious about this potential and Spirit Mysteries is truly growing into an incredible platform for the evolution of consciousness with people finding themselves deeper wisdom and transformation every single day. But as far as the conversation of the dream time goes, it doesn't end there. No, no, no. It's truly a crazy rabbit hole and one that we have at least an hour or two of content worth creating about it. So consider this just the beginning of a great adventure that we can go on together. I'd love to seriously keep going right now, but she patches making faces at me from behind the camera. We have to keep these videos a certain length in order to make them every week or else we burn out our animation team and everyone just gets frazzled. So with that, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Toodles.